Guys, the new 94 grain Norma frangible projectiles offered over at Raven Rocks Precision. A couple of nuanced techniques that go into loading these guys, including making sure you're getting proper neck tension, because typically these are 0.353 diameter. But more on that in today's video. Stay with me. Guys, if you've been around the channel for any length of time, you will know that I like lead-free frangible ammunition. Now, it has a couple of benefits. You can shoot steel with it and don't have to worry about all the bullet fragments that come off steel, meaning you can typically shoot steel way closer than you can safely with uh, regular ammunition. So that's one perk. And when it comes to actually loading it, you don't necessarily have to worry as much about lead exposure. And this is particularly beneficial if you have, you know, something like elevated lead levels, uh, if you shoot indoors a lot, having a projectile that does not have lead in it is a huge advantage. Now, there are some quirks that come to loading these, and probably the most, I guess, significant detractor for people not to load them is cost. I love the centerfire frangible bullets. Um, at the moment of recording, I'll throw a price up on the screen here. I think if you want to get those to reload, I think they're somewhere in the ballpark between 25 and 35 cents a piece. So that is more than I'm actually loading, you know, 9mm4 for just plinking ammo for the whole cartridge. And that's just for the projectile. Add in another 8 to 10 cents for a primer, cost of powder, cost of brass, if you aren't, you know, already supplied on brass. And it goes on and on. That is until recently. Now, shout out to my good friend, Nate. He's the one that actually uh, sent me the link for what we're going to be going in today. And that is these guys. And hopefully you're able to see that clear on camera. But these are available on Raven Rocks Precision. I'm not gonna throw a link in here. YouTube, for some reason, doesn't like when I cover projectiles. These are from Raven Rocks Precision, and these are made by Norma over in Europe. And these are a 95 grain nine mil projectile that is a polymer copper style of frangible bullet. Now, center fires, which you know you guys have seen on the channel, I love center fires projectiles. Those are copper tin. These are a copper polymer. Now, these guys recently came onto the market, I would say probably a month or two ago. And at the time of filming, we're in March of 2025. These guys came onto the market, and uh, my good friend Nate sent me the link and said, Hey, worth checking out. I looked at them. It's like they were, and here's the kicker for a thousand of them with free shipping. I paid $46. That's 4.6 cents a piece after shipping, after tax, all that out the door. Which, if you know anything about projectile search, you're not going to find anything else comparable on the market for that kind of price for anything other than maybe a just bare cast lead projectile. Uh, feel free to correct me in the comments section if you have something that's cheaper than that uh, that you're buying commercially available. But, you know, at time of filming, that's current going prices. So, one of the things uh, that actually has the cost, hopefully you guys are able to see this, one of the things that allows the cost on these to be so low is Raven Rocks is actually doing kind of an early adopter sale for those that pick these up because there's not a lot of load data on these. Now, YouTube disclaimer for the YouTube manual viewer who is most likely going to be watching this video. I am not showing how to make loaded ammunition in this video. In fact, everything in this room is in compliance with YouTube community guidelines and policies. Please stop demonetizing videos where I just cover a little piece of copper and polymer. This is not ammunition. I'm not even showing how to make it into ammunition in today's video. We're just going over some of the details of this and some of the quirks behind it. Now, if YouTube for some reason does decide to demonetize this video, I would really appreciate it if you guys check out um, basically how I've been funding the channel as of late, and that is not YouTube revenue as much because doing this kind of content for you guys, YouTube usually cuts monetization on videos. So all the time that goes into making this, I'm basically getting little to nothing back in return for it. However, if you guys appreciate the work we're doing over here at The Reloading Craft, hop on over to the eBay store and check out our official new TRC products. And this is one of my newly released 22LR snap caps. And unlike other 22LR printed snap caps, there is no live ammunition anywhere here, by the way. They feed and cycle, just like regular ammo. And what makes these guys different from other 22 snap caps on the market, usually then you'd kick out a snap cap, right? Okay. And I'm going to do my best to catch this. There we go. 
I'm keeping it in frame just for you guys. Set the 22 over the side. And you can see there, that rim is just fine. There's a tiny little dent in that, which as this snap cap sits, that little dent will basically puff right back out and you'll be able to use this for many, many more shots. So that's what makes them different from a lot of the 22 snap caps on the market. If you have a 22, you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out the link in the description down below for location on where to get these guys. Let's get back to it. And to show you guys further, we're gonna hop over here to the bench. I'm gonna swivel you guys around and I'm just gonna show you some of the nuances that actually go behind loading these 95 grain projectiles and some of the stuff that you may have to be aware of when you start loading them. Like I said earlier, there's no current published load data on these. So you're basically developing load information from scratch. There are some details in uh, the Raven Rocks Precision Forum. But if you are going to purchase these, be aware that load data for them is not currently commercially available, and that is why the cost of entry is so low. Well, I guess that and one other thing. Let's take a look. Alrighty, guys, so hopping over to the bench here, I'm just going to pick out, let's say, five samples of these guys at random, and we are going to do a simple weight test. Now, these are... Uh, it's supposed to be a 95 grain projectile. However, on the website, and I'll throw a picture of that up here somewhere, I believe Raven Rocks does show that these guys can run a little light. Now the scale is on and calibrated. We're just going to weigh these guys here. So that one's coming in at 91.4. 91.8. 92.8. See, that one has a little bit of its uh, tail still on it there. 93.8. and 93.0. Now this isn't necessarily that big of a deal when you're working up the load if you're using uh, like a load development software such as Gordon's Reloading Tool or Quick Load. This isn't that big of a deal. You can just adjust your weight accordingly or assume they're 95 grain and you're just going to be running on the safer end of whatever kind of pressure development you're doing. The other contributing factor, and this is the one that may have some people um, a little more concerned or not able to use these like you traditionally would is the diameter. Now, for those of you out there who are newer to 9mm loading, a 9mm projectile is supposed to be 0.355. That is your traditional diameter. If it's cast, it can be 0.356, so you're powder coating it, or because cast bullets like to be a little bit more oversized. These guys and these calipers have been calibrated and trued to a feeler gauge, so I know these guys are accurate. If we do a just average diameter measurement here. What do we have? That's, so we have 0.3 down here, 0.35, 1, 2, 0.353. All right, let's spin that. That does appear to be consistent. Uh, for those of you who prefer that I take a measurement with the front blade, we can do that. Spin, we're averaged. And there you go, 0 0.353, 0 0.3532, if you wanted to estimate it. All right, let's measure another one. Again, 0 0.353 to 0 0.3535. This one's ever so slightly out of concentricity. That one bumps up almost to 0 0.354 right there. 0.353 in the shallow spot. So it is worth noting that if you have a barrel that is you know slightly shot out or slightly oversized, you may not get as good of accuracy out of these guys, but it is worth testing. I, of course, do shoot out of both a PSA dagger for initial testing, particularly because uh, I'm working up the load from scratch. I started with a PSA dagger and like I said, load data from scratch and recommendations from the guys in the forums. Again, do so at your own risk. I am not liable for any load development you choose to do off of these. And I started with the PSA dagger, which has a conventional rifle barrel. And then I ran uh, half of the load or half of the batch for each load increment through that. Once I determined it was safe, I ran the other half through my HKP30SK carry gun. 
and although the barrel lengths are roughly similar, I noticed about 100 feet per second drop in the P30SK. That, of course, does use a polygonal rifle barrel that is not conventional lands and groups. So there is a little bit more room in the rifling on the P30SK. Now, I will say accuracy was still good, and I'm working on confirming the last stage of loading with these guys. Now, the other concern that comes up when loading these guys is because they are undersized. If you happen to use a case expander that is something along the lines of the Lyman M die, where the expander plug actually goes down in the case, opens it up, and preps for the bullets actually being seated. And again, this is a dummy round. There's no powder or primers here, so these are inert. But if you're using that style of a seater plug, the case will actually be oversized slightly, and when the projectile is seated, it has very little neck tension. One of these cases has had the neck expanded with a uh, Redding expander die. It's basically a Lyman M die style, and the other one has been expanded with a Lee powder through expander, which is more of just a V style expander. It doesn't have the whole plug that goes down in the case. And to show this, I simply do what I typically do when I'm testing neck tension on pistol rounds. This one has been expanded using my Redding expander die. And as you can see there, just a little bit of force and the projectile snapped right down into the case. Because when you're expanding it, you're obviously over expanding that case slightly. And if you put it side by side here with, come on focus, the one that was expanded with the Lee die, if I can get them level here, you'll notice just how much setback we got on that projectile and that can actually cause pressure spikes. Now, if we do the same thing with the one that was expanded with the Lee powder through expander die, you'll note there is no bullet setback, and that's with me pushing basically as hard as I could with my thumb there against the side of the press frame. Like I said before, that much setback down to the case is not something you want, so just be mindful of that when you're expanding your cases. So when it comes to actually expanding the cases for these guys, you need to use both a traditional style sizing die that's going to size the entire case. I know 9mm is tapered. I usually don't do that. But you want to size the entire case so you get good uh, neck tension. And then you need to use an expander die that is more of a Lee uh, traditional V style expander rather than a Lyman M die expander. And if we take a look at these two here, This one had a little bit of setback. Again, this is supposed to seat to 1.13 or at 1.122. So a little bit of setback, but this one, again, remember, we're supposed to be 1.13. We're 1.073. So this one's seated way back into the case, and this would cause a pressure spike. So not a good idea. Keep that in mind. So far, guys, the load development on these guys is going pretty well. Uh, I think for the price, they're definitely worth it. Looking forward to actually getting some of my final tests done on these and actually getting out to the range and doing some final load development and accuracy on these. And, of course, we'll report back from there once I do. Shout out again to good friend Nate for sending me the link to these and actually introducing me to them. Um, the load development's paying off. Super cool that there is a frangible option on the market at such a low price point, um, like I said, with the drop in diameter uh, from your typical 355 down to a 3535 or 353, somewhere in that ballpark, um, I haven't noticed a huge difference other than about 100 feet per second drop in velocity out of my HKs that run polygonal barrels. But accuracy, like I said, has still been good. So with all that being said, if you guys are interested in these, check out the link in the description down below. Uh, if you are looking for a 22 snap cap and you shoot 22s, uh, check out the new TRC 22 snap caps. That is basically the way that I'm able to afford doing videos on stuff like this that most likely will not get monetized. So if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, please consider picking up some of our 22 snap caps like these guys over on the TRC eBay store. If you've picked up some of these Norma 95 grain frangible projectiles, and if you've done your own de load development on them, would love to hear about that in the comment section down below. I think they're definitely a super cool option on the market. Looking forward to more load data coming out there on them, and looking forward to hearing you guys experience something you'd be interested in. Let me know in the comment section down below. I know for myself, being able to go out to the range and shoot steel without worrying about any kind of splashback off of them is huge. I would love to actually have all my training ammo 
be something of this style, both for the lead-free element as well as just that reduced hazard when you're actually out shooting on steel. With that being said, I'm going to get back to doing the last of my load development on these guys. Stay safe out there, keep on reloading, and if you're interested in some frangible at an affordable price, check out these guys. Like I said, not much load data out there, but if you're willing to do that from scratch and you have a good background in loading something like this, might be worth giving them a look. As always, stay safe, guys. Catch you later, and I'll update you in the future with results on the last of the load testing on these guys as well. Thanks. Catch you later.